Hello everyone, Neuralnar here. Today I have the Xantrex X-Power 1500 watt inverter that I'm playing around with and I thought I'd make a little video while I'm at it. I've done a number of things with it already and uh, I didn't record those, but uh, what I am going to record here is an efficiency test. I wanted to, to uh, test the efficiency under a couple different conditions. One, at uh, a high input voltage, like if you have a fresh battery bank or it's connected to a vehicle that's running. And two, at uh, a low input voltage because I want to see what the difference is in the, uh, the output curve. This particular inverter, um, on the box here somewhere, they have uh, the specs on it, and uh, the efficiency on here they say is a uh, peak of 90%. That doesn't really tell me much because it's just the peak. Maybe it's at 6% over the rest of the curve. Uh, it's probably 80 some percent. But uh, So I want to see what that actually looks like. Um, like I said, I'm not going to cover most of the rest of this inverter. I did take a look at it and it's pretty well constructed. It's a, a low-cost consumer inverter, but uh, overall I think it's pretty good. Um, it's about 2,000 watt surge, uh, 1,700 uh, continuous. It'll overheat at 1,700 if you let it run for uh, 10 minutes or so, but overall it's pretty well made. So today I thought I would uh, just talk a little bit about the, uh, the efficiency. I'm going to show how I test the efficiency curve of this from uh, zero watts to uh, whatever its maximum it can handle is under the various conditions and I thought uh, people might be interested in seeing that. There's a lot of things that go into efficiency when it comes to uh, any inverter, particularly a modified sine wave inverter. Um, and You can talk about the efficiency of the whole system from let's say it's a solar powered setup or something from the uh, how you have your solar pan panels mounted, whether there's any shading, uh, the angle to the sun if they're on a mechanical tracking mount, if you use power point trackers, the efficiency of, of those systems, um, the cabling between the panels, bypass diodes, uh, cabling to your battery bank, the uh, connections between your batteries, the number of batteries that you use. Um, a greater number of batteries will decrease your efficiency at low draws and uh, increase it at high because it's an I squared factor. Um, the type of battery construction you use, lead calcium, lead, lead antimony, uh, the age, the condition of the batteries, uh, the, the fusing and switching systems that you employ, um, those do consume power, so you need to be careful with those. Uh, just all kinds of little things, cabling to the inverter. Um, of course, there's the inverter itself, which we're going to look at here, uh, just under a few conditions. There's also a uh, type of connectors that you use. As far as your inverter goes, there's uh, input voltage variations. Uh, there's uh, output variations. I'm just going to test purely resistive loads here, but uh, Active loads, reactive loads are uh, quite a bit different, like if you have uh, transformers, motors, uh, that sort of thing on the output, their efficiencies can be quite a bit lower under those than resistive loads. Their efficiencies will change over different temperatures. Uh, it'll change with uh, input voltage, which I'm going to test here, uh, lots of other conditions. Um, the output waveform of this one is a modified sine wave. Modified sine wave inverters typically have a total harmonic distortion of about 35%. Lots of things don't like that motors in particular. Uh, they really are only supposed to run up to about 5% total harmonic distortion. After that they start derating quite significantly. So the, uh, there's two things that you can run into there with modified sine wave that causes uh, an efficiency change of your total system. One is uh, what I would call uh, efficacy of the end appliance. You may have to run that appliance longer to get the same benefit from it, which lowers the efficiency. Uh, that may be true for microwave ovens, for example. And uh, second is just uh, the power draw of your, your end uh, appliance. Your appliance may draw more power and do less work. So that's also an efficiency factor that won't come into play when you look at the uh, efficiency rating that I'm, efficiency curve that I'm making here. But uh, anyway, enough of staring at this box. Let's go take a look at my test setup. Here's the mess of cables and uh, meters and such that is my test setup. This is the inverter. It's a pretty small little thing for 1500 watts. Um, Nothing really too special there, but I'm going to take this uh, current clamp meter, clamp it around one of the input power cables. I have my kilowatt meter that uh, reads the, uh, the watts output if I switch it to watts. So I can take a look at that. I'm going to have this meter on DC voltage, so I can measure the input voltage right here at the battery terminals. I have it clipped right to the terminals because I don't want to include the uh, cabling losses. I have uh, a couple of uh, deep cycle batteries here that I'm going to use as my load. I have this battery charger, a uh, 45 amp battery charger, that I'm going to have hooked up for the uh, high voltage draw test. 
And then for the low input voltage, I'm going to disconnect one of the batteries and disconnect my uh, power supply over here so that I have a lower voltage going to this. And for the load, in the past I've used uh, electric heaters and that always gets really annoying. So I do have an electric heater here that I'm going to use for uh, some of the load, but I finally made myself a, uh, a load, uh, adjustable load out of just a bunch of lamp sockets. And I put in 100 watt light bulbs, which I hoarded when they got banned. So I have plenty of those available. So this is uh, nine lights. Just uh, I just mounted it to a two by four. It took me an hour or two to make uh, make this set up, but it'll make things a lot more convenient. So all I'm going to do is set up the camera, put my camera on uh, these three meters all at the same time, and uh, I'm going to screw in the light bulbs one at a time. And uh, then I'm just going to go back look at this uh, video footage and uh, make a chart on my computer. All right, I think all three meters are in frame, so I'm going to start the uh, the high voltage efficiency curve test. This is with uh, with no load, the inverter's on, so no light bulbs. One 100 watt light bulb, and I wait just a little bit in between each one to let the uh, everything stabilize. Two light bulbs. Three light bulbs. Ah, ah, ah. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine. Now that I have that, I'm going to unscrew these light bulbs without burning myself, hopefully. And uh, turn on this electric heater since uh, these light bulbs only go up to 900 watts. And I want to go higher than that. So there is uh, about 1,000 watts. I have the heater going and uh, one of the light bulbs. Now I'll just keep screwing these things in again. Eight. Nine. And if I go any higher, this thing will shut off due to an overload condition. But uh, that's good enough for this 1500 watt inverter. It actually does quite a bit more than that. And uh, it's probably getting pretty hot right now, so I'll. No, it's still reasonably cool. So I'll shut it off, but uh, it does get warmer after a while. I'll take these results now and uh, watch this video and put it in a spreadsheet for you. Well, here's my results, and this shows pretty clearly the uh, deficiencies of using consumer-grade uh, equipment to do your uh, your testing and uh, kludge together home-built equipment. Obviously, this curve isn't as smooth as it should be. Uh, something didn't go right. I'm not sure why this looks this way, and I guess I don't care quite enough to uh, figure it out. Uh, perhaps over here where the uh, efficiency changed by about 3%, it, uh, perhaps it was a change in temperature in the inverter because it did turn the load off temporarily to uh, switch to a different load. Uh, the power factor of the heater and the light bulbs is the same, so that's not it, but uh, there's something different somewhere, not sure what it is. In any case, this is the efficiency curve. This uh, top line up here is 90%, and you can see it never gets anywhere near it. Um, this one right here is 80%, so the efficiency of this inverter is not very high. This is pretty typical of most inverters you'll find, but given that this is a Xantrex, I expected better. Well, let's try uh, lowering the input voltage and doing the same test again. I'm not going to record that part, but uh, I'll come back with the results. You would expect that lowering the input voltage would decrease efficiency because it's uh, an I-squared loss again, but uh, inverters often don't work that way, so we'll see how that curve compares to this one. Alright, I went ahead and re-ran that test on a low input voltage test case. 
the red line that you're looking at, that's with a low input voltage, and the blue line, that's with the high input voltage, the, uh, the footage that I had just shown. I'm not sure what happened here with the blue line. Uh, this shows the deficiencies of using kludge together equipment and uh, consumer grade stuff to do laboratory type work. That should be a nice smooth curve, but it's not. I'm not sure why, but it's not important enough to figure out or to redo. Uh, this uh, data here shows shows what I'm trying to uh, trying to show here anyway. Um, this uh, hash mark here is 90%, and this one here is 80%. Just for reference, on the left side is at zero watts, and uh, 1500 watts is about where that red line um, stops. But uh, you'll notice that the efficiency is actually higher with a low input voltage than it is with a high input voltage. When I got over here with the uh, low input voltage test case, it actually shut down due to uh, too low of an input voltage. Uh, the output voltage was also sagging significantly by then anyway, but uh, it can only do uh, maybe 12, 1300 watts with a low input voltage, whereas it can do 1700 with the high. But uh, so this inverter is rated for greater than 90% efficiency, peak efficiency. And you can see that, yes, they did hit their advertised efficiency. It is just ever so slightly greater than 90% for a very small range and at a very small range of input voltages. And uh, I guess they're not lying, but if you look at this curve, you can see that in reality, it's going to be about 85% efficient over most of the range. And also, at low input voltages, at low battery voltages, it will be uh, more efficient at low currents whereas at high battery voltages it'll be more efficient at uh, the higher currents. And this is also why, part of the reason why you want to size your inverter to be approximately double the, uh, the maximum load that you would expect to uh, frequently run, because the peak, peak efficiency is usually somewhere in the middle. And uh, here you can see that the peak efficiency, if you average everything out, tends to be around 50% uh, of maximum output current. But uh, it's kind of a boring shot to end on here, but that's pretty much what I wanted to show. Uh, I'm just kind of messing around with this thing today and uh, thought I'd show you my, my efficiency load test. So, thanks for watching.